In Indonesia, the capital city of Jakarta is organized around this monument. Uh, the monument is an obelisk with a flame on top and this spread base. As I looked into this city that was built mostly after independence, World War II, uh, is that the roots of this seemingly modern city and specifically this modern monument uh, seem to be quite modern themselves. The first president of Indonesia was uh, an architect who was one of the first graduates of the Bandung Institute of Technology modeled after MIT and designed to create a new generation of modernist technocrats who could reconstruct the nation after independence. Uh, this monument uh, that was largely the conception of the first president of Indonesia. Uh, it follows very closely the traditional principles of Hindu Javanese uh, religion. Uh, it is a linga yoni arrangement. Linga and yoni are the male and female genitalia that are the source of all life uh, according to the Hindu religion. And it very much uh, was a clear reference point for this reconstruction of the modern city of Jakarta uh, for the 20th century and beyond. The roots of this belief system lie in the traditional religious royal capitals of central Java that were the capitals of the nation prior to independence. And so my first arrival in Indonesia was in the royal city of Surakarta, uh, where I took this picture uh, in the 1990s, even though a similar scene could have been found uh, in the centuries prior to when I took this picture. These are the offerings, the ritual offerings, in the center of the palace. They are also part of the Linga and Yoni uh, symbol system of Hindu Javanese religious uh, order. Uh, they are part of a ritual that is enacted uh, several times a year in which these sacred uh, Hindu symbols are paraded through the palace and out to the mosque at the front of the palace. Uh, I arrived in Indonesia after uh, attending architecture school and there was a key turning point in my third year of school when I was studying the Salk Institute I thought the most interesting thing I was going to learn about uh, the Salk Institute had to do with the Virendale trusses, the interesting sectional condition of the Salk Institute, the uh, towers of offices that mediate the transition from the laboratories to the central courtyard. But what I found was by far the most interesting thing about the building was the courtyard itself. And asking the question, what is so great about this courtyard? Uh, the spatial character uh, was really identified as being the result of the architectural containment of the space. So it is the architecture of containment that is the crucial component. And this spurred an interest uh, in all things uh, Italian. And I learned Italian, got ready to go to Italy uh, upon graduation. Uh, studied the Noli map of the 18th century, which is a specific graphic technique of an altered uh, solid void um, figure ground uh, representation of space with the additional information of the ground floor plans of specific churches like uh, the Pantheon, uh, the churches, the other markets and public other public accessible buildings. Um, in a hybrid representation of architecture and urban space as a continuous phenomenon. Um, but something happened on my way to Rome. Um, I ended up in Surakarta, central Java, uh, in part because of this photograph showing the use of a gate building uh, beyond which these open spaces, uh, courtyards, uh, arrangement of specific wall buildings and courtyards and pavilions that make up the DNA of the Javanese architectural spatial order. I thought it was just about uh, the space, um, but it turned out to be something much deeper. I arrived and found uh, a 
palace that was falling to pieces um, because of lack of funding, a very strange mixture of John, Javanese animism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Dutch colonial uh, style, Baroque. Uh, it was a very strange situation. Looking into the background, uh, the basis for the rich cultural manifestations in Surakarta with a high population density of Java here at the bottom of the picture. The high population density was supported by the rich agricultural lands. Here's the island of Java uh, in the country of Indonesia, outlined thus. You may have heard of Bali. Um, the rich agricultural lands of Java were fed by a constant uh, periodic stream of ashes from the volcanoes that lined the spine of the island. Here in the center of Java are the two royal cities, Surakarta and Jogjakarta, mentioned in the reading. Uh, from an early period, the high population density supported rich cultural manifestations such as the largest Buddhist temple in the world here, Borobudur, um, that was based on this very powerful model of the connection between heaven and earth that was common to um, the Hindu and Buddhist tradition of physical manifestations of cosmological orders. Uh, the Buddhism flourished in Java during the 8th and 9th centuries only to be displaced uh, by the Hindu Javanese uh, flourishing that came um, before and then flourished after the uh, fading away of Buddhism. Um, the Hindu model of the cosmos is characterized by a mountain at the center of the universe where the gods live and then a series of concentric rings of ocean, continent, ocean, continent uh, until reaching the vast oceans beyond the seventh ring continent. Um, and this is the uh, conceptual model of the cosmos, according to Hinduism, that was adapted uh, wholeheartedly by the Javanese uh, to create a Hindu Javanese cosmological order. Here is a, another representation of it, more three dimensional, showing some of the complexities of this model. And there are very detailed naming strategies and beliefs and characteristics of every detail of this diagram of the universe that is a very elaborate three-dimensional uh, arrangement. This model became the direct uh, template for the construction of the palace, the city, and the ordering of the entire kingdom, uh, which constitutes uh, the island of, of Java. And so the palaces of the kings of Java uh, were modeled after this cosmological model. And it was the king, uh, the nobles, and the people of the capital city that fell to them. It was their job to use this palace complex as an instrument for maintaining the order and the balance between heaven and earth because the uh, the understanding is that the palace is the location where the umbilical cord attaches between heaven and earth, and all good fortune flows from heaven to earth through this umbilical cord at the center of the palace, which is uh, an analogy to the central mountain of the gods at the center of the Hindu Javanese cosmological model. And so the, the center courtyard is the most sacred realm of the entire kingdom of Java. <clears throat> the wall buildings that surround and define that central courtyard <clears throat> um, have gates in them that lead to other courtyards and other walls uh, out into the vast oceans of the north and south uh, of the cosmological model. And so here's the diagram that is the blueprint for the universe and the palace. And by maintaining this strong correlation between the universe and the world uh, through the palace, 
uh, the palace becomes an, an, a literal instrument for maintaining the balance between heaven and earth. If all good fortune flows to the center of the palace and spreads out, then you can actually alter the flow of fortune between heaven and earth. When calamities strike, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, financial disaster, political unrest, uh, depending on where it happens on the island of Java, you will perform a ceremony in a different part of the palace. This is the building um, where uh, the canon, the sacred canon of Javanese history, uh, one of the two sacred canons is stored. This is one of the oldest buildings uh, in Indonesia. It's a wood building and it takes a lot of maintenance. Um, the priest and the king are the only two people allowed to see the canon. Thus it remains shrouded in this glass pavilion. And several times a year it gets cleaned in a religious ritual of um, canon and building cleaning. Um, the pavilion is hosed down, scrubbed. The building is scrubbed. The water is swept from the cannon off the building, off the center of platform towards the edge of the pavilion where people wait um, to collect the water because this water is considered sacred down to the last drop. And when uh, they get home, they will sprinkle some of this water on the rice fields. When their children are sick, they will rub it on their their limbs. Uh, they may even drink some of this water uh, if they are really sick. Uh, another ritual that occurs uh, as a way of mobilizing the power and instrumental role of the palace um, is the annual recognition of the Javanese New Year. And in this occasion, um, tens of thousands of people uh, walk from their villages to the palace, uh, including these servants of the palace, servants of the king. They designate their service and, and loyalty to the king and the palace uh, by wearing this gold and red ribbon, which is a signal to the queen of the South Seas, the Javanese animist uh, deity that watches over the, the kingdom of Java, that they are friends of the family, of the royal family. Uh, they sit all afternoon in uh, some sort of meditation, awaiting for nightfall when the king is expected to appear when he is ready. Outside in the city streets, throngs of people line the streets waiting for uh, the parade uh, that is at the center of this ceremony. The king emerges and uh, with the sacred objects that were selected uh, based on what went wrong in the previous year, what is predicted to go wrong in the coming year, and uh, those are indications of the specific nature of the imbalance between heaven and earth. And so the specific objects chosen are chosen such that they will be the most effective way to restore the balance. And these objects are covered so as to maintain the secret, so as not to reveal what is predicted for the coming years, so the people don't get sent into a panic. The objects are uh, carried by the nobles, uh, behind um, a herd of white buffalo. When the buffalo stop, the whole parade stops. And when they trot forward, everyone picks up their skirt and trots along behind them. Uh, when the animals relieve themselves, the young men, especially um, lining the streets, uh, scramble to scoop up the excrement and take it home because of the magic healing properties they have. Um, and so through these rituals enacted in spatially specific ways in the palace, the balance between heaven and earth is maintained. And these rituals have been performed for hundreds of years and uh, are continu will continue to be performed in the future. Um, the palace itself is a very strange hybrid uh, cultural formation that mixes uh, Javanese animism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Dutch colonial Baroque, as seen in this pediment uh, and in the uh, European brass band, 
uh, the fezes uh, worn by the musicians are an influence from the Middle East. Um, and these are actual uh, colonial era uh, tuxedo coats with the tails snipped off so that the ceremonial sword can be tucked in the back without interfering with any tails. Um, this is a present from the Queen of the Netherlands to the King of Java uh, that has been given a religious designation uh, and title uh, in Javanese. And every Thursday evening, there is a ceremony uh, and an offering. Uh, here you see it at the, underneath the carriage. Um, in order to uh, mobilize the carriage's role in maintaining the balance between heaven and earth. And so the, the royal family, the nobles, uh, the king and his six wives and 36 children uh, and hundreds of nobles and thousands of servants of the palace uh, all uh, perform the rituals that uh, maintain a strict calendar um, in order to maintain the balance between heaven and earth. Uh, here you see the Linga and Yoni uh, offerings being paraded from the center of the palace out to the north uh, town square, um, where it is uh, presented to the mosque. And then after prayers at the mosque, um, the signal is given and the offerings are ripped to pieces uh, because of the power of the elements that um, make up the the offerings. They are brought home, they are eaten, uh, they are used to uh, maintain the health and prosperity of the households. Uh, but the palace itself has suffered after World War II from a lack of income, and so the palace itself has largely fallen uh, into disrepair. Um, any resources that exist are used in the maintenance of the, of the rituals. This is Pa Asmo, who is uh, the priest architect builder of the palace. And it is his sacred task to, um, when there's money available, to make repairs uh, to the palace. Every building in the central palace has a name that designates its role in the religious um, function of maintaining the order between heaven and earth. Uh, it is filled with symbolism and analogies and religious belief. Um, when my team uh, did uh, documentation, we had to follow all of the rituals, including wearing the Samir um, at all times uh, as we um, did our documentation of the buildings. We sat in meditation prayer prior to um, ascending into the building and doing our work every day. Um, the analysis of the spatial functions uh, proceeded through a, a documentation of the buildings, measured drawings of each of the buildings, and then um, representations such as this help clarify this function of the palace. Uh, the central axis running through the middle, the north uh, town square, the mosque, the marketplace, uh, the pavilion where the cannon is kept, uh, the center of the palace where uh, the most sacred section where the sacred objects are held, where the king emerges uh, for the primary ceremonies, uh, the parade route um, through the front of the palace, around the city, uh, center. Um, along this way. And back into the palace. The parade route of the Linga and Yoni offerings comes through the center, right through the center of this and through the banyan trees and across to the mosque. And so the spatial character of the rituals um, are very much a part of the uh, ongoing operation of the palace in terms of maintaining balance between heaven and earth. The king at the center is the prime uh, uh, 
It's a prime responsibility for the maintenance of this balance between heaven and earth. Uh, Ba'asmo, uh, when we replaced some of the pillars of the tower devoted to the Queen of the South Seas, uh, wearing the samir, working with hand tools, uh, the carving, uh, the rituals required before the commencement of each workday, and the uh, painstaking restoration of the specific elements of the palace. Uh, the palace continues today. Uh, the king uh, who ruled from the 1940s before independence until his death in 2002, uh, the new king, his son, uh, still operates and maintains the rituals. Uh, and here he is uh, meditating under the sacred banyan tree with his pack of Marlboro cigarettes. Um, the interesting thing is that the, the nation state itself continues to operate ostensibly according to the world economic order, but at the same time there was a strong component of the Javanese religious uh, rituals. Um, the dominant president from 1966 until his uh, stepping down in 1998 was a very religious man uh, who followed all of the sacred principles of Javanese kingship uh, and uh, that continued to um, inform the physical configuration of the capital city of uh, Indonesia, the city of Jakarta. And so these things uh, with roots long in the past still have some influence on the way cities operate today.